road today. We are going to be looking at exercise 617, which is again a set of geometric solids. So you're going to have two shapes. So the one being a cylinder and the other being a rectangular prism. So going to the task, it reads as follows. You have to redraw the front and top view of a combination of solids with the cunning plane AA, and then draw a sectional left, right, and top view. And then you have to find only the true shape. And just like last time, if they say draw the view, it's the entire view. But if it's just a true shape, then you just do the area that's cut. All constructions must be shown and all hidden detail must be shown as well. Right. So if we go into the diagram, then you can see here that in the top view, we have our center axis, which is at 45 degrees. Then the Diameter is 38 and the square side is 42. And then the height of the object is 66. And the base at the bottom of the prism is 16 only. Please take note of these two dimensions, the 9 and the 58 for the cunning line later on. So to start, we're going to go to the top view. So the top view will have the same function as the auxiliary view had last time. Okay. So you're going to start with your circle. And if we go back to the diagram, that circle has a diameter of 38. So obviously you're going to be setting your compass to 19. And then after that, you're going to be adding your center at 45 degrees through there. You can do that at the end as well if you want. And then you're going to be adding the square base around it. Now, please take into account the square base is not difficult to do. Obviously, the sides are at 45 degrees. So this is at 45 degrees to your T-square and that one as well. So all you're going to do is you're going to take the 42 square side, okay, and divide in half, which is 21. So from the center, on the center, you, all the construction, you're going to measure 21 and get these points. So it's from the center, you're going to measure 21, and then you draw your square base around those four points. Not difficult to do at all. Just make sure you use your 45 degree set square. Then we're going to add an XY line again. The gap there you can make up yourself. I made it one centimeter, don't go too big. And then we want to project our construction line to our front view. Now, keeping in mind that the height is 66 and 16. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the base corners, the three there, and then I'm also going to take the silhouette of the cylinder. Now, keep in mind I'm calling it silhouette because that's actually not a corner, it's basically the outline of the cylinder, and I'm going to take that up. I'm going to mark that down. So that distance there is the 16 that we had on the diagram, and that was the 66 to the top. And then I could draw those two horizontal lines as well. And then I can just go over that and make it nice and solid. Now, once you have your front and top view complete, you do want to go in and draw the cutting line. Okay. Now, again, the cutting line is not difficult to do. If we go back to the diagram, So from this base, we measure up nine, and that will give us the first point of the cutting line, okay? So obviously, we take the 66, we minus the 58, gives us eight. So we go from this corner, we go down eight, and that will give us the second point there, and we draw the cutting line through it. Now on the cutting line, remember, guys, that the long line is supposed to be about seven to 14 millimeters. The gap is two millimeters, and the short line is two as well. So make sure that it is a long, short, broken line. And then also just to remind that the end should be thickened, about the last five millimeters or so should be thickened with your pencil. Now, once you have your cutting line, you want to add your center as well at the front view. And then I'm also going to add the lines separating the views from each other. So if we zoom in here, obviously we're going to put down bounce lines. You don't have to use bounce lines, but it makes it a lot easier. So this is our top view, there's our front view. So we're going to have our left view on the right side, and we're going to have our right view on the left side, okay? It's because it's in first angle orthographic projection. Now to start the view, I'm going to start with the view on the right. We are going to go to the top view and we are going to divide our circle into 12. Now, whenever on any type, whether we're talking about cams, whether we're talking about any other type of loci, machine drawings, usually when you see a circle, you divide it into 12. Okay. So because the cylinder doesn't have any corners, we have to recreate, and I'm quoting here, our own corners, so to speak. Okay. You can number them 1 to 12 as well. Okay. But for today's exercise, I find that it's actually not necessary because we're not going to be plotting them one by one. 
Okay, so first we have to realize that we're going to be cutting this front view through here. Then it's going to skip a bit and then it's going to cut the prism only on that corner. Okay, so if we are going to be drawing a view here on the right, which is of course a left view, if we're looking at from the left, which side must fall away in order to see the cut? Well, obviously the top's going to fall away. So the bottom is still going to be left. So we're going to be seeing this cut here as an oval. Just imagine cutting through a cocan at an angle. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the points from the circle. Now we already have the side point there on the side. Okay. And the middle is already marked by the center. So we're just going to take these four extra ones, and we project them up, and we mark them on the cutting line. So those are the points where the lines are going to be cut, okay? And then we're going to take those across to the left view on the right side. So to simplify that, all we're going to do is we're going to go to the top view, and we're going to take all the points, and obviously some of them are behind the others, so we're only going to take it from one side, the seven points. We're going to take it on the bounce line and up. Okay, and then we're going to go to the front view and do the same thing with those seven points when we take it across, and that will give us this little grid here. Now, what's nice about this grid, and this is why I said you don't really have to number, if you start at the top, and that's going to be your first point, then you go down and left second, down and left third, down and left fourth, okay, and then you go down and right fifth, down and right sixth, down and right seventh, and then you go up and right for the next point, up and right, up and right. Up and left up and left and then you have all the points okay so the grid actually makes it a lot easier now the best way to plot or connect these points is of course with the French curve but if you don't have something like that do you use your neatest possible freehand so if you are doing it in freehand do it very light through the points connect the points to get your curvature and afterwards when you're happy with the result you make it dark okay but be careful it can look very sloppy if it's not done neatly so you connect the points and that will give you the curvature. Okay, so it, it's very close to a circle, but it's actually not. It's actually slightly higher than it is wide. Okay, so um, don't be fooled. It's, you cannot do it with your compass. Okay, it's technically an oval. Right, after that, we want to add the rest of the front view. So please keep in mind this bottom bit here is left. That wasn't cut, okay? So from the side view, a cylinder is just a rectangle okay so this bit here that you see here that's not being cut you can actually see the rest of the cylinder uncut here below it okay and that's something you have to visualize then we want to go and project for the base so the base again is not difficult so we're going to take the base corners on the balance line we're going to take the height of the base across and then, then we get our base points here and here on the side but we also need this corner that's being cut. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that cutting point there on the prism. That's the rectangular prism being cut there. So if I take it down, it's being cut on this base side and on that base side. Okay, so you can actually go and finish the top view by drawing that line solid as well. Then you want to take it across. So I'm going to take this cutting point. I take it across. Obviously, that one's going to be in the middle. Then I take the side ones as well. There it goes on the bounce line and it goes up and I mark it on the line. And that gives me that little triangle that's going to be cut off. Okay. And you can actually then go and draw the rest of the base solid. So it's a bit time consuming, but it actually is not difficult to do at all. Okay. Now that we have our front side and top view complete, um, you can see there's that little corner that was cut off. And there's the oval. Okay. And there's the corner on the base that has been cut. We can actually go and we can add our hatching as well. So there you can see the 45 degree hatching on the front view on that little corner and on the oval. All right now you'll see I'm not going to explain the right view on the left side. So this right view here has this exact same oval and exact same triangle that has been cut. The cut surface here that is shown is exactly the same as you see here. So this is exactly the same as you find on this side. So you are going to apply exactly the same method that you used to find this view, you're going to find that one. So the only difference between them is that with this right view that's here on the left, okay, if I'm cutting it through there and I'm looking at it from the right side, which side must fall away from me to see the cut, obviously it's going to be the bottom part this time. It's only the tiny little corners left, and there you can see it. 
And then, of course, the cut surface of that oval, there's that, and then that top base of the cylinder, okay? So there you can see the top of the cylinder still being left, okay? Cutting at an angle for the oval, and then that tip. So I'm not going to explain that again. Um, <clears throat> just please apply the same method as before. Right, so now that we have our two side views and top views complete, we're actually going to be doing the auxiliary view or the true shape of the cut, okay? So for that one, the first step that we're going to do is we can go to the front view and the same cutting points that we had before when we drew the left view on the right side. We're going to take those same cutting points and this time we're going to apply it for the auxiliary view. Now we have to project it 90 degrees, so either 90 degrees down, so 90 degrees with this cutting line. So obviously you would place your set square on that and make sure you use the 90 degrees. Now obviously... If we go down here, there's no space. The bounce line's in the way there anyway, and even without the bounce line, it's tricky. So the only space we actually have available is here at the top. So we're gonna go and add an XY line. Now this XY is parallel with this cutting line. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your set square on that line, put a ruler underneath the set square, and then you shift it along, and that will give you the line parallel that you're gonna see here, the X1, Y1. Then you're going to project 90 degrees from it. Now again, to project 90 degrees, you put your side of your set square on there, you put a ruler underneath and when you shift it along, you will get all these lines parallel that you can see. Now you'll see once again, I've got this little grid here for the auxiliary view or the true shape, okay? Now remember before, when we had the grid for the sectional left view, okay, you can actually go from this XY here, and you can measure these distances. You can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so you can take the distances from the x, y, and measure the same distances on this view. And then you take these lines, so these vertical lines running down here, take the same ones, take the same distances, and from this x, y, which I've labeled x1, y1, you plot the same distances down. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you draw the lines parallel with the X1, Y1, or with a cutting line, okay? And you just draw them along. You can make them longer if you have to. Obviously, you don't know where it's gonna stop in the beginning. You just draw them where you need it, okay? And of course, the other lines to get the grid, you just take from your cutting points in the front view. And that will give you this grid, and you follow the same method as before. You start on one side, and you go, if you will, down and left, down and left, down and left, Okay, down and right, down and right, and you just keep following the grid points as you go around. Okay, and that will give you all the points that you can then plot. Okay, now you also have to project the points from the tip here because we are cutting that little point there. So I'm taking these two across as well. And of course, those measurements you could take from the XY and measure one, two for the first line. And then the second line, you measure one distance. Okay. And then you go to the auxiliary view, and from the XY, you measure one, two distances. And from the second line, you measure only one. And then, of course, you can go and you can connect it. And this is what it's going to look like. Now, because this is a true shape, you have to label it somewhere close to that with a TS, a true shape. Via fear in Afrikaans, Vara Forum for Afrikaans, Okies. And there's the little corner that has been cut on the prism, okay? Um, now, some students actually don't prefer to use the XY line here, especially because it's a bit of a tight squeeze of space. So what some students do is they go to their side view, and instead of measuring from the XY, they actually draw a center through here, and then they measure the distances from the center, okay, for both for the curve and the corner. And then when they go here, they don't, let's say they don't have the XY line, they put, let's say, a center somewhere here, and then they plot the points around the center as well, okay? So whether you're plotting around the center or from an XY line, it doesn't matter what method you apply, okay? But please make sure that you write the tiers. Just also make sure that you add some 45 degree hatching to it. It doesn't have to be that close, otherwise that will take too long in the exam. And there you are, guys. We are actually done. Good luck.